The first thing that we are going to do when talking about NGRX is we are going to go over the original Facebook problem that originated the Flux architecture that later gave origin to architectures like Redux or its derived project or its Angular 2 equivalent, the NGRX store library. Let's understand the original Facebook problem. So, what happened a couple of years ago that gave origin to a new type of application architecture? Let's try to understand the problem that the Facebook team faced a couple of years ago. It had to do with their unread messages counter. Here is a simplified version of the Facebook chat system. So, the problem occurred in their chat system. They had here a counter of unread messages in the Facebook main page and they wanted to keep track of how many messages the user still had to read. So there were multiple threads in their chat and there was a chat window where the user could type in here new messages. So as new messages were streamed back from the backend using server push, this counter was supposed to be kept in sync with the messages that were being received from the backend. Now, the problem with this type of application is, and you will see a similar problem in other types of applications, such as, for example, Gmail, if you want to have a list of unread messages per folder, or any application that is similar, for example, to Microsoft Outlook. Any time that we have the same data on the screen being represented in different ways and everything is visible at the same time on the screen, we will fall into this problem. So, for example, the messages, they are represented here in this part of the screen. But we could say here that the unread messages counter, this is simply another representation of the same data, which is the messages to which the user has access, the messages where the user is a participant in those particular threads. One projection of that data is the current thread with the current list of messages. Another projection of that data is a list of thread summaries, where we just see the last message of the thread and we have a list of participants and yet another projection of the same data. So these are simply different queries that we would do to the same domain data. The data consists of the participants, the threads and the messages. So those are the multiple business notions that are at stake here and different parts of the screen correspond to different queries to that same data. Now, as the data evolves over time, as we receive new data from the backend, as we produce ourselves new data via the write new messages section, this data needs to be kept constantly in sync across the multiple projections of that same business data. So we need to make sure that whenever we write a new message or we receive a new message from a thread that is not currently selected, that we bump the unread messages counter accordingly. Similarly, whenever we click on a thread that has unread messages, we want to decrement the unread messages counter, but only by the amount of new messages that are on that thread that we have not yet read. So the Facebook problem can be summarized in the following way. We have an application that shows multiple representations of the same domain business data. Things like participants, threads, messages. At the same time, on the same screen, you have multiple queries to the same data. This particular type of application tends to give rise to problems similar to the Facebook counter problem. I have seen this problem arise in an application that was relatively similar to Microsoft Outlook, for example. The problem was the same, counters of unread messages in folders and multiple representations in the same screen at the same time. So what is the problem here? The problem is that we want the application to be able to scale in complexity. We want to be able to add new features to the application without uh, arriving at a state where we can no longer maintain or understand the application. For example, when we are writing a new message, 
we want to be able to send the message to the backend and at the same time, if the message was correctly saved in the backend, we want to be able to update the list of messages, the list of threads. So we want to update here the thread summary with the last message of the thread. And if necessary, we want to update the unread messages counter. But we want to do that without creating a tight coupling between this part of the application and all the rest of the application. We don't want that every single part of the application to be aware of the other sections of the application. We want these components here, the message section and the thread section. So these are the container components of our application, also known as smart components. We want these components to be isolated from each other. We don't want to create tight couplings where we are looking, for example, for the logic to update the counter and all of a sudden that logic is spread across multiple parts of the application. For example, it would have been very strange to find logic to update the unread messages counter here at the level of the create new message component. So it's a problem of making sure that the application scales in complexity, that we can reason about an application where multiple representations of the same business data are visible, where we have multiple actors modifying this data. So this is very important. We have here a modification operation, but also when we click on each thread, that is also a modification operation. We are decrementing the number of unread messages for a particular user. So to summarize, if you have a complex application where you have multiple views of the same data on the same screen and you have multiple intervening actors that modify that same data, such as, for example, the user itself that it's modifying via a form and the server that is giving you new versions of that data. And you want to keep a great user experience. So one way of solving all this problem of synchronization of the multiple views would be to just refresh everything all the time. But that's what we want to avoid. We want to keep a great user experience. So if you have such type of application and such type of user experience requirements, you will benefit tremendously from the architecture that we are about to present in this course. But you might be thinking at this point, this is not a new problem. There have been other applications that have been built in the past that are very similar to a chat system. So what is the real benefit of Flux? To understand that, we are going to talk about custom global events, which is the typical solution that we would try to apply to this problem that would not scale in complexity. And we are going to see why and why Flux is a much better alternative. Let's cover that in the next lesson.